Welcome to The Love Affair, a relationship podcast. Listen in as we discuss all things love and relationships starting now. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to The Love Affair podcast. I'm your host, Robin, also known as Robin the Renaissance. And I'm her husband and co-host, Jimmy K. And we're back with episode nine. Episode nine. We are here talking about our love affair and we mentioned that he broke my heart and I ended up finding someone else. You broke my heart too. Wait, you broke my heart. Okay. Yes. We broke each other's heart, but yours was a little more, uh, Okay, fine. <laughs> I just wanted to put that out there because a few, sure, sure. Yeah, a few episodes before you were like, you broke my heart. So this is a get back then, huh? That's what you're saying? A sm- minor. A smidge. A smidge. A, a okay. smidge. All right. All right. Yeah. I'll let you get that. Oh, ball. how the tables turn. Well, okay, the tables no, no, no. will turn again. Don't, oh. you know, don't, get, do you, too, do you don't get too um, haughty. Okay, fine. Okay, fine. So... Uh, we will get into all of that, but before we do, we're going to go into our newest segment, which is called What's Good, What's Great, What's Going On. That's our way of letting you guys know what we've been up to in between recordings so that you can get to know us a little bit better. So I'm going to ask you, Jimmy K, what's good? I'm Jimmy K. What's yeah. great? What's, what's good? What's great? What's, what's going been on? going on? Well, we hosted uh, our last love affair event for this for this year yeah uh so we had a couple's game night here at the house and uh that was a really good time for me i think for you as well but I we had it. we had uh about what three couples over mm-hmm. over to the house and uh we had good food good conversation good times yeah so, so yeah that was that was that was uh what's good for 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 me um it was just good. Like we uh, we played. Uh, I don't even know if you want to call it a game, but the, uh, <laughs> the questions when we could put people on the hot seat. Hot bench. Hot bench. Yeah, yeah. We had the uh, what? Well, we had like eighty something questions total, right? It was or something a lot. like that. I don't know. So yeah. you know, we all took a turn answering the questions, and it was good to get a little, maybe, get a little insight on other couples. It's always good when people start to share. Yeah, I agree. And when, especially when it's fun and light, it's nothing too heavy. You know, you just kind of sharing, you know, sharing stories, laughing, mm-hmm. and all that stuff. So I really enjoyed that. That was good for me. I agree. I had a good time, and I wanted to mention that when we decided to launch the Love Affair podcast this summer, we also decided to add an event component to it. So we do couples date nights, and we we do them every quarter. So Uh, We started in the summer. We had a fall event. This was our winter event. And just to see um, the support and and the fun and and be able to close out the year doing something that became a passion project. And now it's like, oh, you know what? This is actually something more than just a hobby. We're going to keep it going. So we're really looking forward to keeping these events and the podcast going and growing into the next year. And to your point, having a good time with other couples. What I what I noticed was that um, what what I think, not just I noticed, but I think has been um, an unintended consequence. I don't know if I'm saying that right. But probably not consequence. Yeah. Uh, um, that's not the word you look for. Yeah, right result, ahead. I don't know. Yeah. Is that I forgot how important it is to have couples as friends, especially when we do have conversations and we do give insight into how married life really is, how parenting really is and, and, and the opportunity for people to be vulnerable and to also know they're not alone, you know? So one of the topics that came up that night was about, um, conflict or how we, um, argue or choose not to argue. And I remember, um, someone made a comment that they don't think that grown people should argue. And we all, I was like, really? (laughs) Because 
we going to argue. Yeah. We're going to get to the yeah. bottom of some things. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't mean that we're wrong or even different. It's just sometimes we allow life to happen. And as a result of, uh, what, what are you shaking no, your head about? Just, uh, it just, it's just, anytime you get two people in a room, you know, together, or not even in a room together. I guess what I'm saying, when you get two people working together, there's going to be conflict. You're going to have disagreements and disagreements leads to arguments. It, it has nothing to do with a maturity level or your age or whatever. It's just, you know, it's this life. Stuff happens. People yeah. going to argue. Yeah. Listen, if people going to be. Misunderstandings happen. It's just, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And the thing is about that, while I understand, um, on some level, you don't want to go through your marriage arguing and right. fighting like cats and dogs and stuff. And I know that's not anyone's goal. But in talking about how we all handle conflict, who argues, who cusses, who apologizes, you know, how you wreck us out. Those conversations are so good and helpful because for other couples looking and listening in is like, oh, so I'm not as bad or I'm not wrong. I'm not so different. Um, these things are happening to married couples of all ages and stages. So that's just one example of why I thought the night was so good was yeah. because we really could see ourselves mm -hmm. in and other others. couples. And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. we're, mm -hmm. we're going to be okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we're going to be just fine. We're going to be yeah. just fine. Mm -hmm. We're not just over here in a vacuum, right, you know? Right. So I love that so much, and I'm really glad that we were able to do it. So right, right. that was definitely the, one of the highlights of the month. Yeah, for sure. For, for sure. sure. So I had to answer the question. You answered the question. What's good? What's great? And what's going on? What's been with going you? on with me? Well, okay. Um, I will say this. What's been going on? Because those would be my good and greats. Yeah. So in since the last recording, we watched Wakanda Forever, and we left the movie with our review and our ranking of it. I gave it an 8 out of 10, mm -hmm. and then I dropped the number, and then I raised it back to 8 after listening to other reviews and podcasts yeah. and, and takeaways. And w let me ask you, what was your ranking? I'm reaching in my pocket. I got a turn in my black card you're because turning your I'm black turning card because oh what i say i say i guess i think at first i said seven and a half and then i think i dropped it to seven okay i think you did and i'm turning in my black card because mm. i think this is an unpopular opinion amongst people that look like me <laughs> <laughs> that is so, seven out of ten yeah seven out of ten because most people we talk talk to and you know what we see on social social media People giving it 10 out of 10. It's great. It's great. Mm -hmm. So, you mm -hmm. know. I th have listened to so much that I say, you know what? I think I might have to watch it again, but it yeah. is not on my immediate watch again list. What I think they did exceptionally well was their tribute to Chadwick as yeah. the Black Panther. I thought that the way they threaded his his uh, performance throughout the movie, that was su superior. <laughs> <laughs> that was superior. Get you one of these. Get you mm -hmm. one of these. But um, I, I think Angela Bassett delivered yeah, yeah. in this movie. That scene with the council. Come on. Uh, that, okay. That was great. Yeah. yeah. I think where yeah. it started to take a turn was of course they had to introduce the new villain and I'm okay with that story. I just felt like we spent too much time underwater learning about the villain's backstory. And I felt like we needed a separate movie to, for that. It was long. It was, but I think they were, that was just, uh, they're setting it up. Probably going to have a, a movie with just with them. Yeah, the, the underwater people, whatever they were called, and and they, they should. Yeah, so it's I guess you know. But what I'm saying in this movie, we this did not need long. like an hour underwater uh, in Atlantis I or where, wherever they mm. were. I also felt like there were so many potholes that the story was not um, cohesive enough to me. I didn't feel like I was rooting for the antagonist or really. 
I, d- I didn't enjoy, is her name Shuri, Zuri? Yeah. I didn't enjoy her as the bl- new Black Panther and what they were trying to convey. And I was like, it didn't, it didn't connect with me. Um, I gave her the benefit of the doubt, but I was still like, I would not watch a movie where she's the lead. It, it, she, it doesn't, it, she just doesn't work for me. Yeah. Also, the n- introduction of the new black girl, Iron Man, Iron, Iron Woman girl, character. Call, yeah. Again, I was like, uh, I don't know enough about this young lady to be so invested in her that I'm willing to exchange Angela Bassett for yeah. her. <laughs> Give me my queen back. Yeah, yeah I was, I was they shocked did, that. Yeah, yeah, I was like, yeah. so y'all did all this for this little girl? Why? Yeah. So again, they're introducing new characters and things, and I just felt like the first half of the movie, superior. The second half of the movie, I was like, okay, I would rather watch a sequel or, or whatever it's called, trilogy, whatever, if they're going to do some offshoots. I definitely need the Umbaku. Is that how you say his name? Umbaku, I need those yeah. people. I need a movie wow. all about wow. them. Yes. <laughs> and I definitely need a movie about the... Um, the underwater people? No. Oh. Um, although I enjoy them, I just felt like, okay, if they do one, I might watch, but not so much. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, the, oh, what is her name? Um, oh, the uh, Army, the lady, she, uh, Angela Bassett had to um, yeah, yeah, I know you're talking sit about. her down. I, I can't remember her name. Dora Milaje, I don't know yeah. if I'm saying that right. I might be mix, mixing that up with Woman King. But anyway, those are the only two, but I will say this. I don't think I'm that excited to go back and watch... Um, another Black Panther slash Wakanda installment unless it's focused on those because yeah, yeah. everybody else I'm kind of like meh. So I'll still give it an 8 out of 10. Yeah. It's a struggle I need to eight, watch though. it again. I need to watch it again. I'm, I, I don't it wasn't very memorable for me. True. So I want to watch it again and see if my my rating would change. Okay. So yeah. So whenever it comes out on streaming or whatever, I, I, I sit down and watch it again. Yeah. And, and maybe my expectations were, were a little too high going into it um, because the first the first Black Panther was just like, I give that a 10 out of 10 or at least a nine, nine, nine and a half, you know. So I think my ex- expectations was just, just a little too high and I left disappointed. Not saying it was a bad movie. I just, me personally, I left disappointed. Yeah. So. I, I felt... I felt like, okay, they did a good job with Chadwick. Yeah. I'm not okay with losing Angela Bassett, the queen. Um, yeah. Mm. I feel like they just dropped that in for, yeah. for no reason. Yeah, so. it was, yeah, yeah. yeah. So mm. that is my take, and All I'm right. sticking to it. All right, stick to it. So the other thing that happened in pop culture news... Michelle Obama released her book and she went on a speaking tour and the quote heard around the world was when she said, if you're, I'm paraphrasing, if you want to be married, you have to prepare yourself for long periods of discomfort. She went on to say that, uh, again, I'm paraphrasing, that um, is a little disheartening because she thinks that a lot of younger people are quitting too soon and giving up on their marriage too soon. And she said if she would have judged her own marriage um, in years five or 10, I I believe, then um, she, she basically she would have missed out on how their marriage evolved and whatnot. And I thought that was so interesting because it got mixed reviews. Um, I thought it was so interesting because the Obamas have been couples goals for over 10 years. We Uh, love it. We enjoy it. They are our forever presidents and first forever president and first lady. And looking at them, it's like goals. Mm -hmm. We love it. And then when she opened up her heart and she said, be prepared for long periods of discomfort. And in, if you ever read Becoming, you understand it was long periods of dis- discomfort. And um, whew, yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> lots of things were going mm -hmm. on as, uh, you know, lots of zigs and zags yeah. and squiggly lines um, in their love story. And um, when people, I guess people didn't read the book, perhaps. I'm sure they didn't read Becoming and they, they probably haven't read her new book, The Light Within or something like that. But as a result of her making that sound bite, I saw a lot of people saying, I'm not getting married to have long <laughs> periods of discomfort. That was the general synopsis. Yeah, yeah. Nope, this is why I'm gonna stay single. Nope, ain't nobody got time for that. Nope, you know. Huh. And I really wanted, I went and listened to the whole NPR uh, interview mm -hmm. where she said that. I do wanna read the new book, but I, it made me think about our love story. Right. It made me think about a long period of discomfort <laughs> where we were concerned yeah. and how deciding to leave the friend zone, enter the love zone, and ultimately it ruined our friendship and yeah. everything came to a crashing halt, mm -hmm. halt. And we had a very long period of discomfort. Yes. And we zigged and we zagged. We did. And <laughs> eventually we're here. Mm -hmm. But... But you want to talk about the long period of discomfort? Is that what is that what you're getting at? Yeah, let's tell them about our long period of discomfort. Okay. Okay. We're going to hop into it. All right. Hey there, are you enjoying the conversation as much as we are? Then let us know. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. We're here every other Thursday with a brand new episode and you do not want to miss it. Okay. All right. Back to the conversation. So... We decided that <laughs> it wasn't working out Yeah. because I, I said there were things happening I couldn't get with. We said, I'm and We don't done. need to go into that anymore yeah. to, today. We, we had enough of that. I, got, I had enough of getting tire tracks on my back, get thrown under the bus. Okay. Anyway. So here we are now. Uh -huh. We're it's, it's over. That story is in a previous episode. Um, what was going on with you? At that time, because we stopped talking, we we went from talking every day, mm -hmm. hanging out, whatnot, to everything stopped. It did. Um, you just asked what was going on with me. Yeah. Well, first and foremost, foremost, I was I was hurt. Um, I felt rejected. You know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. you know the stuff I was had going on with me that caused you to be like, hey, we got to put a stop to this, you know, that was, <clears throat> I just felt rejected, excuse me, just felt rejected. So, and it was hard. What's the matter? Um, Something to my eye. Okay. Okay. Sorry about that. Let me start over. No, go ahead. Okay. I'm sorry. I was Okay. Distracted. But yeah, it was just, um, that was hurtful to me, you know, just to hear, to hear you say, we don't have to do this anymore. You know what I mean? Because I, I, I wanted you and I wanted to make it. You know, I wanted it to work. I didn't do enough to make it work, but I still wanted it to work. So to hear that rejection just was very, very hurtful. So, you know, it just caused me to shut down, you know, because mm -hmm. we didn't talk. I don't I don't know when the last I don't know. How how long of a period went from that conversation in January to where where we even talked again? I don't know if you know, do you remember? I feel like it was definitely longer than a week. And I, there's a part of me that thinks it went on for at least a month. Yeah. At least a month. And I think we both were kind of stubborn. Not kind of. sure. I know I was stubborn. Absolutely stubborn. Yeah. And honestly, I don't know why I stopped calling. I probably was thinking that you messed it up. So it's your so job to, to fix the, it, I mean, you know. I need to make it the first step, yeah. Mm -hmm. But I missed you. I knew that much, mm -hmm. and I was mad at you. I was disappointed at the whole thing, you know. Like, man, you know, this didn't work out like I thought. And before I was like, I knew I was taking a risk that if we go this path, you know, there's a chance that I might lose my friend. Yeah. You know, I might gain a man, but I'll lose my friend. Wait, that don't make sense. That if if we don't work out, then I'm there's a risk that I might also lose my friend in trying to make you my man. Right. And I, knew what you I meant. thank you. Mm -hmm. And so ultimately, 
I lost everything yeah. that I was hoping, mm -hmm. you know, to have with you. So I felt like you messed it up. You got to fix it. And also that was my MO at the time that if I'm done with you, it's I'm over. done with you. It's mm -hmm. really over. Right. But you weren't calling. No, I, I, I wasn't. And that was my, um, that was my defense mechanism um, to, to uh, pain, I guess, pain from somebody else or rejection or hurt mm -hmm. is to retreat, you know what I mean? Go into myself, you know what I mean? Silent treatment. Like I didn't have the tools. I didn't have, I didn't have the tools. I had the, the emotional maturity or the tools to know how to properly navigate through, through something like that. Because for, for me, I mean, this went on for probably almost into my thirties, um, that, um, expressing your feelings, especially, uh, hurt or something like that was a sign of weakness. And I know I definitely thought about it then. That's, that's kind of like, you don't want, you don't want to let on that somebody got to you. So it, to personalize that, that you're saying I didn't, I didn't I didn't want to let anybody know that you got that you got that you got to me that you hurt me okay so consequence was that of that was I just shut down and shut I can shut you out you know what I mean so it wasn't right obviously you know if I had if of course if I had the tools that I have now you know I definitely. It would have been a, a short period of time where, you know, it's kind of like, hey, I, I can't talk to you right now. I can't even look at you. Wow. You know, but I would I would have definitely made the first step mm -hmm. to, to kind of clear the air, smooth it over. You know what I mean? And and figure out next steps. Mm -hmm. Whether if I would have did that, whether we would have um, got back in the saddle. <laughs> At that time, I don't know. I don't think so because I, I still was pretty, pretty. I had a hard line that like, I'm not gonna let anybody tell me what I can and cannot do because that's what I felt like. You remember we didn't talk about that in the last episode, but I just remembered that that uh, that's how I felt, and I think I said it to you. I don't know if I did. I don't know if I said it to you or not, but I was like, I'm not gonna let anybody. Well, I, I, I ain't gonna let a, a woman. A girl. Seriously, this is this is real. Wow. I'm not gonna let a girl tell me what I can and cannot do. Ooh, the misogyny of it all. I don't know if it's misogyny. Why go a that girl? Far. Why? Okay, I'm gonna stop. That's uh, yeah, a whole different yeah, conversation. Yeah, because I don't think it, okay. I don't think it's that. It's just you know I'm I'm 18. I'm a grown man now. Mm -hmm. In my mind, you know, I just. You're not gonna tell me what I can and cannot do. Mm. That's how you know. That's how I felt. So I feel myself getting a little puffed up right now. Why? I don't know. Every time we get on this camera, <laughs> you get your, you know, I get my feathers ruffled. ruffled. You know what I mean? Listen, now I'm I'm behaving. I think it's something you about that phrase. Like, I mean, I'm well, not gonna let a girl. Well, tell that's me. I'm just you. You want to know? I mean, <laughs> you kind of want to know what my mindset was. I do. Then, then you know I what do. I mean. So, this is me changing yeah. the vibes around mm -hmm. me. Yeah, Ooh. yeah, yeah. Are you trying to put center, center away? Because <laughs> no, oh yeah, sure? no, center is right is here. Is it still here? Because you, center is you're present getting, okay. and accounted for. Okay, all right, and, and it's still there. And center is holding me yeah. near and dear but to that, his heart. But to, to wrap that up, that was that was my that was my feelings. That was my mm -hmm. mindset, and that's what caused me to to really shut you out and to um, not want to even try. Okay. I'm glad you explained that because I really didn't know what your mindset was back then. I thought you were doing it for sure to punish me in, in some sort because I probably was doing it to punish you. Yeah, and I we, know I, it feels like punishment, but that's not mm -hmm. that's not how I operate. I don't I don't it comes off that way. I'm mm -hmm. not saying it's, it doesn't for, uh, for the other person or whatever. Uh, but for me, it's not like I don't I don't have that mindset where I'm going to. I'm gonna stop talking. I'm gonna stop talking to you to punish you. It was just more, you know. I got to protect my. I have to protect myself. Yeah. So for me, it was a little of both. Yeah. That was my mo because again, I didn't have the tools. No one taught me how to resolve conflict. And we're eighteen. Effectively. Yeah, but I'm even saying what was I demonstrated know, uh, in our families and things right, of that nature. Right. I no no no. 
um, no one apologized. No one explained. No one, you know, wanted to get your side of the event. There was no, no, nothing was demonstrated that was positive or effective in conflict resolution or even in communication. So what I learned was um, the only power that I had was the power of my presence. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I'm I'm preaching. Are no, I'm you? kidding. I just saw Deion Sanders say something. Uh, he was like, my location is yeah, not my, my destination, destination or something like that. And then he was he, like, come on, I'm preaching. He was so proud of himself. He's so proud. <laughs> so proud. But, um, oh, that's another topic. We'll talk about that some other time, y'all. Because I do. I want to talk about Deion's decision. Oh, but okay. against center, yeah. Yeah. where are you? It's, it's right there. Hold me near. Mm, um, going back near. to this, though. <laughs> Hold me near and dear, center. Hold me near and dear to your yeah. heart. Um what was I saying, darling? I don't need to I didn't got away from center. Lord. Um, it's always you. It is me. Yeah. yeah. It's is me. It Hi. It's it. I was going to say. I'm the drama. It's me. I was going to say, is it you? Are you the drama? That's what I it's was going to say. absolutely yeah. me. Mm -hmm. What in the world was I going to say? Mercy. Um, you see, oh, that was my way of yeah. my pa the power of my presence, right? Like mm -hmm. I know that I might not control what you do. Or how you do it, or why you do it, but I can control whether or not you gonna do it to me <laughs> again. So I would be like bounce every time you. Uh, what? This is an aside. Every time you start talking like that, I just think about little Stewie. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, uh, short and mighty. Uh huh. Um, your fist balled up. Yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah. I can be a little uh -huh. bit of a rascal right. at times. All but right. back to center. center. That was me. Darling, gee mm. whiz. But I will tell you this, with me and all of my my haughty, puffy, prideful ways, after about a month, I was like, you know what? I miss this man, and I'm going to call him. Yeah. And oh, boy. Yeah. Boy, did I call. You called. And I said, hi, Jim. And he was like, goodbye. What's up? Basically, <laughs> what's I'm up? Kidding. You I still was in self-preservation mode. And yeah, I was just like, what do you want? What is it you need? Mm -hmm. How can I help you, Robin? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was very business yeah. professional. Uh -huh. um, I am fine. Everything is well. Take care. Goodbye. Goodbye. You know, but it was it, it, just, it was cold. It was very cold. And I, and we talked about this multiple times. I still feel bad about that. I think I even apologized to you later, years, years, years later. But OK, you're being serious, so I won't make yeah, a joke because yeah, I was going to. Yeah, I'll oh, reserve uh, yeah. the right to, to insert an inappropriate joke at a later we're not, time. We're not doing anything inappropriate today. Um, but I still even even thinking when I think back on that. It still makes me cringe. It does. Yeah, because that's like a that's that's a you have to humble yourself to do what you did. You know, I mean to to call mm -hmm. even though we were we were beefing. Anytime somebody reaches out when it's conflict, whoever reaches out, that's like a you humble yourself to do that. Mm -hmm. And then for you to humble yourself and me to kind of basically step on it, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? It was, it was, it was, it was it's just not good. It's wrong. Mm -hmm. It's, it is wrong. You yeah. know what I mean? So I still feel bad about that, but how I felt at the time, goodbye. Good, you know, good day to you. Good day to you, ma'am. Listen, I'm a, I'm a insert this. This is, is this, this a will, joke? Is no, this a joke? no, 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 okay. no. It's right. going to be a quick aside. Do you remember when we were, um, guys, in our former life, many, <laughs> many, many moons ago, we were on a marriage ministry team and we taught um, a series on marriage um, at a at our church at the time and. So forth and so on. You said so, our former life. <laughs> in our former former life. Mm. But I'm going to reference something. Do you remember in one of our lessons, I shared um, about it takes humility. Oh, I shared about forgiveness. And I said it takes humility to um, ask for forgiveness. Mm -hmm. And it takes humility to receive an apology. Yeah. And I shared my personal experience with that because you just said it, it's a very humbling experience to go to someone and to 
apologize, right? Yeah. Just to make that bid, like, mm -hmm. can we at least talk? Is the door open where we can talk? And so I would say that, again, in my immaturity and also in my foolish pride, um, if, and if someone approached me and they wanted to apologize to me, oh, the pride oh. in me, the haughty me in me. Would oh, you you're going to eat it because I want to know. Why are you sorry? <laughs> what are you exactly apologizing for? for? Lay it out for mm -hmm. me. And let me make sure that you have, you know, crossed every T and you've dotted every I so that you fully understand your grievance. And then, and then, mm -hmm. if I decide to re-engage with you, you will know that you are on a probationary period yes, yes. and I will not let you forget it. Let me tell you something, people. This is like 100% true because I experienced it. Yes. <laughs> Listen. Uh, I'm just saying, like, no, this ain't no joke. That was in my former life. Right. Hey, I'm, I'm not saying you're not, I'm, I'm not wrong. saying you like that now, but yes. I'm just saying we, because we, we had conversations like, Rap and I'm apologizing. You don't make you don't have to make me eat. You know, you, yeah. crap. You know what I mean? I'm a yeah. Yeah, so. you were the one that had to teach me that. You were like, um, because you're so merciful, and you were like, if somebody is apologizing, you don't have to make them grovel. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. leave people with their dignity. And I was kind of like, but that's the fun part. Right, right. If but you, you hurt me. I want to see you grovel. Mm -hmm. That's the joy. Yeah. Of but, it all, but actually not, it's not. You, I, I, yeah. I have evolved beyond that. Right, right. And that's what I was getting ready to say because I was making a joke when I was like, you know, I was making a joke, you know, kind of saying that's 100% true. But No, it was. I mean, it, it was 100% true that that was our, you know, our, our experience. But I'm just saying you have gone beyond that. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? You know. Yeah. Oh, I don't want to say. I mean, I would say mature. Sometimes it, yeah, mature to hear a, that. A, sometimes it can be condescending. Almost sometimes. Yeah. You, you matured. Yeah. You know, no, nah, I don't mean to, it like that. But but you know what? It's really condescending if you uh, emphasize the T, and you, you say you need to mature. mature. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and yeah. yes, you, you need, matured. You have matured. Yeah. yeah so yeah. yeah. But no, you yeah. But yeah, I was that's, that's not your story now. It's not my story now. And um, I remember going back to what we taught about that. I remember mm -hmm. that um, that insight, me sharing my that my evolution in that um, was really helpful to other people because there were a lot of wives and husbands in that class that were like, oh yeah, because I am still kind of, I, I make them, I make them eat it. I make mm -hmm. them grovel. I make them work their way out of, you know, the doghouse. And, um, when I flip, when I explained to them, one of the insights I had was, you know what? I can remember a time when I prayed to God and said, you know, I'm really sorry about something I did. Yeah. And God was like, Go on. <laughs> uh, is that what he said? It, no, I'm sorry, I can't remember a time uh, we was like, uh -huh. go, go on. on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, and made me lay it out uh -huh. and say, you know, I was just doing this and that and the other. And, 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 and he's like, hmm. Continue. Continue. Mm -hmm. it, it, could there be anything more to add to this, you mm -hmm. know, while I'm considering what extending grace? and for? Yeah, yeah. I was like, I don't remember ever having that type of yeah. experience in my prayer life when mm -hmm. I was asking God for forgiveness. Mm -hmm. In fact, I remember this, that there was a lot of times when I was really hesitant to even ask for forgiveness. Yeah. Again, because of pride probably some disappointment and shame and whatnot as well. But I remember that I used to be really scared to even ask for forgiveness sometimes because I was like, oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. I thought that God was going to be like my parents mm -hmm. and just be a total a-hole and jerk, yeah, you know? Yeah. But I was like, I don't think I ever got that. Right. And I remember by the time I built myself up to go and finally go before go what is it go on go the, before the throne, the throne mm -hmm. and lay myself out and be willing to, you know, repent. Mm -hmm. I had my whole thing prepared, you mm -hmm. know. God, I'm sorry. <laughs> Wash me in your cleansing blood. Yeah, you know, yeah. whatever. Well. You know, it's all the dramatics, right? <laughs> And uh, I wouldn't even get any real response to it. It was mm -hmm. kind of like, you know how in, this, in scriptures, Jesus is like, 
go on and take up your bed and walk get get your yeah, bed up and yeah, go and walk yeah, you know yeah. and go mm-hmm. on sit no more yeah, you know uh-huh. he was not making people do that and i was like so why do i think i need to mm-hmm. yeah i don't have a heaven hell of what's the other thing they got That's a, they sheol hades yeah so you gonna just purgatory I don't so you're have gonna a list pl- them all, huh? Yeah, okay. I'm just saying. Yeah, you don't. I don't have a place to put anybody like right, that. Right. And here I am mm-hmm. withholding um, forgiveness. Yeah. Yeah. So you matured. With the heavy With the emphasis tea. on, the, on tea. the tea. Okay. All right. Center. Come Center. on. Center. Okay, we're back. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Let me know in the comments. Let me find out from you guys. Do you think it's easier to ask for forgiveness or to receive an apology? What do you think is the easier thing to do and what do you think is the harder harder thing to do? So, yeah. Let me know. All right. I, I can answer it. Well. Okay, yeah, you answer it too. I'm, okay, I'm curious. Okay, what was the question again? You said what's easier at, to ask for forgiveness or to receive an apology? Yes. I think the the hard What's harder for me is probably asking for forgiveness because you do have to humble yourself. Even though receiving an apology, when I receive a, an apology, I feel something on the inside. It's, it's, it's not bad. It's, it's just I almost want to rush the person along because I don't want them to grovel and all that stuff. You know what I mean? It's kind of like, okay, okay, all right, man. Or, okay, Robin, I forgive you. Or, you know what I mean? I kind of just want to, you don't have to stay there too long. Just say what you say. Say, I apologize for doing this to you. And let's move on. Mm. I don't, yeah, I don't, I, I, don't want, I don't want them to grovel. I don't want them to keep, you know, you know, I don't know. Like, yeah, to linger Not, not even begging. It's just like, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have done this. You know, you don't have to keep doing, you don't have to keep doing that. Just, I just want you to mean it. You mean know what it? I mean? Okay. And you know, yeah, you, you can feel it when somebody, we, yeah, you can feel when some someone's sincere. Excuse me. What do you think about amends, though? When you say you want to rush them along mm-hmm. through the uh, apology slash ex- slash explanation, mm-hmm. you know, do I want them? If they're, they, yeah. if they're apologizing to me. Yeah. They, what about the amends? Because sometimes, you know, people have to explain, I didn't mean it that way. Here's mm-hmm. what I learned from it. Here's what I'm willing to do to make it right. You, you know, in in so many words. But for me, I think the apology, when it's sincere, is enough. I don't. Can you remember a time when I asked you to to make it right? Like just between just me and you? I don't think so. Like, I need you to do one, two, and three to make amends. I don't... You know what's interesting? I can't think of a a, a thing right now. I'm mm-hmm. pretty sure that I probably offered something. You probably did. Because I totally believe that an, an apology is not complete without an acknowledgement that of the breach, an ownership of the person's role in the breach and then an offer of amends so even if it is what do you need from me to feel better about this you know Mm. that's that bid right there to me is still okay that's yeah yeah. you know that's an offer of amends tell me because sometimes people think that um the apology is enough and i'm like it sometimes ain't. it is. Sometimes it's not. Sometimes. You know, um, I, I used just, to tell I just people this. Me and you is like, yeah, yeah. yeah. But anyway, go ahead. I you will tell, tell you people. this. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know how we got on this. Me, That's I took right. us away. Yeah, away but from center. Away from center. But I will say this. I remember being in um, in conflict with someone, and when they got to the point where they were ready to apologize to me, it was after the fact that they went running around telling everybody else how they felt about me. Yeah. And I remember that when this person and I finally decided to sit down and have a conversation, um, we decided this. We, we decided what our next steps would be, would be. But I added one more thing to it. I said, 
now that you've we've had this conversation, it's your responsibility to go back to all of those people that you talked so poorly about me to. Yeah. And you tell them we made it right. You do clean not clean my name up. Clean my name. Mm -hmm. You know, and whether or not they did it or not, I don't know. But that was what I required from right, them. Right. Because I honestly don't care if you have someone that you want to vent to, but I do have a problem when you do not give them the whole story. So if you gonna fall out with me, fall out. But if you decide to, um, if you decide, you know what? I might be wrong about the situation. Let me call Robin and let's invite, uh, let me invite her to lunch. Let's talk about it. Fine, I'm gonna be open to it. But don't forget to tell you and tell your little friends your that friends? Your, you and your little hood rat friends. Don't forget to go back and tell them, hey, I have been thinking about this situation and I realized that I might be wrong here. And I reached out to her and I called her and we met and we talked it over and we resolved it. So I just want to fill you all in. Tell them the start, middle and then the end, too. Right. Right. But that's again. That's Maturity in, with the capital T, right? And that's in, uh, uh, emphasis on the T. Emphasis on T, mature. Yeah, but yeah. That's I, I agree with you. That is important. When somebody goes around smearing, I don't know if you call it smearing your name in that situation, but I'm gonna use that word. Mm -hmm. Go around smearing your name, and then the person that did the smearing, you know, you know, come to an understanding. Yeah, you have to go back. I think you, you should. You, you should, and I'm gonna say you have to. Whether they do it or not is another story. But yeah. You know what I mean? Because you can't have, you can't have, you, just, you can't have that. You know, you, you went around just talking bad about somebody and then come to find out you were wrong and then let the the three people you told, they probably turn into 30 because they start talking, thinking, you know, you're one way. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? And it's, <clears throat> excuse me. You, <clears throat> excuse me. Go ahead and cough and let it <clears throat> out. My goodness. We got to uh, mute that. Sorry, guys. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll but, come uh, back. but yeah, you, it, that with that part when you talk about amends, it's, that's, that's very important. Mm -hmm. I think it needs to be done. Uh, I agree. Yeah. That, that reminds me of something else, but I might have to reserve it for another conversation. It might come back up, though. Yeah. But I think when we go back to us at that time, mm -hmm. we did not have these skills. No. No one told us how to do it better. Or differently than what we were doing, it was just so figuring it out. we were just figuring it out. And um, I knew that I was willing to make a bid, pick up the phone, and call first. Mm -hmm. That was huge for me because I had never done that. Yeah, yeah. You know, my my gift from above. No, I think <laughs> <laughs> I was. You saying, had the gift of goodbye. I had the gift of goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> but my gift was so intense that yeah. it was as if you were never conceived. <laughs> you didn't exist anymore. Oh, okay. I you know, a, and yeah. I was, I have this ability, again, a defense mechanism where I will compartmentalize whatever we had and park it somewhere else in my mm -hmm. brain. And it, what is it in the scripture? What did I say? It's, it's in the sea, sea of, of forgetfulness, forgetfulness yeah. that I will act and it will be a serious thing. Mm -hmm. I will act as if I never, never knew, knew you. you. Yeah. And people would be like, whoa. And I said, one thing about me, good, bad, or indifferent, mm -hmm. you will always know where you stand with me. That's, I don't play games like right. that. You always know, and, and you will always know why. Yeah, yeah. And that's, why, that's one of the things I love about you. It's like, I don't have to guess. You know, I, I know where well, I know when you're, you're happy with me or upset with me or, or mad at me. So yeah, uh, it makes it makes it easy. -er. I always thought I was doing people a favor by being so forward. Um, I didn't realize because I didn't <laughs> attach grace to it <laughs> or grace or <laughs> or wisdom. Maybe or it was... maybe it's a uh, tone as well. Well, that's what I mean. Uh, is that what you're talking about? Yeah, okay. I, yeah. I didn't have the skills um, to to add a little sugar and spice yeah, and everything yeah. nice on either side. Like we just, I just fired our landscaper and listen, 
Listen, Why'd you bring that up? I don't man. know. It just got again. Center is somewhere. Yeah. But um, I'm gonna tell you the story about why I fired our, our landscaper. Basically, he overcharged us for a service, and I was pissed about it. I was not happy with the results, and I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna fire him. It's the end of the season. He was he, one and done. And then I said, I'm not that person anymore. I'm going to call him and I'm going to tell him why. And I told him, we're not going to go forward with you. Here's why. And I wanted you to know this because in business, a lot of times you lose customers, but the customers don't always tell you why. And that is quite important to know why your customers are coming to you and also why your customers are leaving. Yeah. So I said, I want you to be aware of this um, and, and, you know, Go on and do your business, but you won't do it here. But I did it more gracefully. Get on, like, you don't, don't mm -hmm. get. Mm -hmm. He was mad at me, <laughs> and I, I listen. I'm gonna tell you what. You get to a point in life where you just say, "Okay." And okay. I still contend, if I had been on the phone, he wouldn't have said. He wasn't. He wasn't like cussing and doing no. doing like that. Not. Not that, but if I had been on the phone, he wouldn't have said some of the things he said in he the didn't. tone that he did. He thought it w it sounded as if we were breaking mm. up. <laughs> you don't understand the sacrifices that mm. I made for you. <laughs> <laughs> and I was just like, I do. Mm -hmm. I didn't appreciate it. Right, right. I'm moving on. Thank you. Yeah. Goodbye. But I told him, I said, you know, I wanted to make sure you had this information. And the reason why was because... Um, at some point, as he d looks over his business, I'm hoping he will take it into consideration and make necessary adjustments. But uh, so, you know, yeah. I'm hoping. Yeah. Okay. So I was going to mention that I always thought I was doing people a favor mm -hmm. if I, by letting them know, here's why I love you. Here's why I hate you. Less no, than love you. <laughs> It's never and hate, never hate. Mm -hmm. hate is oh, wow. an appropriate emotion. Yeah, you pause there. Well, because mm -hmm. I had to make sure I, I am doing a good job making sure that all of my emotions are acknowledged. And hate is appropriate. Okay. Again, I'm coming back to center. <laughs> but I remember this scripture. It says something to the effect of, I think it's somewhere in Proverbs, right? It says something to the effect of, I'd rather know that you hate me publicly than love me privately. Yeah. I remember reading Preach. that as a kid. Right. And I was like, why would anyone want to know that? That you hate me publicly mm -hmm. versus love me privately. But as I got older, it's like, listen, whatever. I rather I want to know how you feel about me. Right. One way or another. But it will really hurt me to know that you love me privately mm -hmm. and you never told me why well, everybody else out there t tearing you down and you're not speaking up or however i mean you can take that a couple of different or. ways yeah yeah mm -hmm. I, the way i received it was let people know yeah where they stand and yeah. what you feel be yeah authentic yeah mm -hmm. so in any case speaking of being authentic and everything going back to us i was like i miss you mm -hmm. i miss my friend I'm, I'm willing to humble myself and make a call. And throughout the, the next few months, I would call the conversation. Was short? Short and unsweet. <laughs> <laughs> it was dry. And I think by the spring, after me trying and knowing you never picked up the call, phone to call me. I was. I did not. You did not. Mm -hmm. I think I reached out to you at least three times, at least. To just say, hey, just mm. calling to say, hey, yeah. and getting that coldness from you. And I, by the spring, I was like, yeah, I'm done here. Yeah. I'm, I'm really And done. you should have been. Yeah. You should have been. So yeah. at that point, what were you doing with your wild and wonderful life? Because you weren't talking to me. I wasn't. I was, I was finding other people to talk to. <laughs> <laughs> Dating, you know. Going out, going out, maybe uh, I wouldn't call myself a clubber, but you know, okay, going fine. out to, yeah, your feathers ruffled. No, I, I, you sure? Yes. Okay. So just, just experience, 
experimenting or now I'm gonna say well, experimenting but experiencing uh different people true yeah and that's yeah that's what you're supposed to do and mm. so I did the same yes you did and I I met someone in that in the spring do we really got to talk about this <sighs> it's an important part of it's our important. history yeah, I met I someone like in it. the spring yeah um, and ultimately that relationship got really serious, really fast. We, uh, got engaged and I, ultimately we got married, but I was preparing to pack up my life and move to the other side of the country and start a new life. And, you know, yeah. left you in the dust yes, after you, you left me in the dust. But... Mm -hmm. We hadn't talked at we all. Had, we hadn't talked all summer. Like you said, that was April. That was a, I think April was when the last time. The we last had time talked. I reached out to you, yes. So I met someone in the spring. Mm -hmm. The summer it blew, blossomed. By the fall, I was packed packed up and prepping to move. Yes. To get married and move, and all of a sudden, I had a feeling. I don't know what it's feeling. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, dun, dun. Okay. She passed away too. Then. Yeah, Is that, yeah. 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 Okay. Aside. Center. Um, uh, yeah. For whatever, you had a feeling. For whatever, yeah. For whatever reason, I had a feeling. I was like, I think Robin is either with somebody, with someone, or she's about to get married. I just had a feeling. Mm -hmm. And so I called you. After was, what after, felt like six months of not yeah, It talking. had to be April, May, June, July, August, September. I think it was probably around October when we... Yeah, so you reached out. Yeah, I reached out, time. and um, I called you, asked you what was going on, what's up, how you doing, and I think I said, uh, I think I asked you, like, uh, uh, are you are you with somebody, or are you about to get married, or something like that? Some somehow it came up, mm -hmm. and you said what? I was like, why breaking you... people's heart. <laughs> Why would you ask me that? Because like, it was so random yeah, after not no. talking to you, and then you go straight for that. And yeah. I was like, "Why would you ask me that?" And you was, and like, I was like, "I just, I just got, got a feeling. feeling. I just have a feeling." And I said, "Yeah, I'm getting married." And you were like, "No, huh. wait, oh, are you man. serious?" So after having a circular conversation of, mm -hmm. "No, you aren't. Yes, I am. No, you aren't. Yes, I am. Mm -hmm. Are you serious? Yes." Promise, say, Pro promise to God. Promise to God. You I know? put that on God. I put that on everything. And yeah. I got quiet. And you got quiet. And honestly. I was I was sick. I was I was sick because I'm like all bleep. I jacked up. You use cuss words. Oh yeah, I was I was a cusser back then. Okay. I had a foul. I had a potty mouth. Um, but yeah, I was like I I missed my chance. I let I let I miss it. It was my fault. That's how I felt. Mm -hmm. It's my fault because I'm the one that, that pulled away. So I was like, I missed my chance and I was sick. I don't, we stayed on the phone, but I really couldn't talk anymore. And I do remember <laughs> my brother and, and our friend was, was over to the house and uh, they was outside, you know, having a little. Puff, puff, pass. No, no, it wasn't that. It was a. Uh, they was drinking a little bit, so I was like, man. A little pankety drink. A little pankety drink. <laughs> <laughs> so I went out there. I was like, I'm about to get drunk. I'm about to get drunk. That's you, how I, that, yeah. You climbed in a bottle? I climbed in the bottle. I dove in the bottle. It was, I, don't, I don't remember if I got drunk or anything like okay. that, but I was like, and it was like, I can't really describe the feeling mm -hmm. I had. It's kind of like, it's almost like you're in a, I was like in a dream or something. I know this sounds so dramatic, but, uh, but I was just, I'm here you, for the drama. I want to hear drama. this. But I just know I just was, I use the word. It was, it, it internally, it was devastating. Wow. Because I don't, you know, I don't know if it was jealousy or what, but yeah, it, it was, uh, that sucked. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah, that's and I knew and I knew it was my fault. Mm -hmm. I knew yeah. it was my fault. So, and, and that's probably the hardest part. That's probably was uh, it's probably the, the the crux of my feelings because if you 
if a person or if I would have made the effort from the last time we had talked in February all the way up, you know what I mean? Maybe it could have been different. So I, I only could, I only could bl blame myself. It okay. wasn't anything else. So it was, it was me. So you were sick. I was sick. And from that point on, though, you handled it a little differently than you handled the conflict in February, mm -hmm. uh, in January. Yeah, cause, in January cause I is when everything again. fell out. Yeah, you started calling. I started calling again every day. And but here it's funny because I would call and I would still just be kind of quiet on the phone at times. You know, like I really wasn't talking as much, but I did want to make sure. I kept asking, "Are you sure you want to do this?" I remember you were more trying to be more persuasive yeah. than asking me, am I sure? I think you were saying. Uh, I don't remember the language I was using. Yeah, I I do remember mm -hmm. the language. You were saying things like, you know, I shouldn't do this. Uh, hmm. You wanted to, you know, we should try, you know, what about, what about us? And, mm -hmm. you know, I'm not, I don't want you to leave. You were saying words. What was you doing? Sitting, sitting on the phone, just uh, with your legs crossed, like, hmm. Is that how I honestly remember being in my bedroom and looking out the window while I was on the phone with you. I do remember that much. And mm -hmm. I I thought about it for seriously for a moment. Like if if I stay, what would that look like? You know? Yeah. Should I even consider this? Cause you were trying hard. And I was just like, nope. Mm -hmm. I like the I, I like my other option, so I'm gonna go there. Right. And um, ultimately, I moved on. I got married, and we stopped talking after I moved. I think I might have we might have said bye. I feel like we had a a pleasant like, okay, wish you well, take care, mm -hmm. bye. Um, yeah, I remember you asking me, "What's gonna come to the wedding?" What? Oh, I probably was being a jerk. Yeah, you yeah. Um, yeah. Like but coming. yeah, yeah. But in any case, I'm, I, we're there. So, uh, moved on. We did not talk at all. So a after that point, right. so in the spring of the following year, I came back for, uh, some graduations and I stayed here, stayed in the city for a month. Mm -hmm. And during that month of being here, I was like, I'm going to call you. And let you know I'm in town and just say hi. Yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. And I did. Yes, you did. And yeah. do you remember how that call went? Yeah. Uh, it was, yeah, because I remember I was watching, I was a big Bulls fan, loved Michael Jordan. So I'm sitting there, there watching the finals, game one of the NBA finals. And I saw the caller ID. I didn't recognize the name. I thought it was a, I thought it was a church because... <laughs> Because it, you know. Okay, fine. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. I don't know why. Yeah. So I picked it up. I was like, hello. And voice on the other hand was like, I speak to Jim. I was like, speaking. And then it clicked. And then it dawned on me. I was like, hey, this is, you know what I mean? This is rapping. Hey, what's going on? How are you doing? And they, I was really, you know, very excited. Yeah. And then I'm still watching the game. Michael Jordan hits a game winning shot at that same time uh, to mm. i mean the buzzer beater to win okay. the game yeah i remember all that i like the symbolism yeah yeah so I, I was like, okay yeah so i was like you you in town i was like, i'm gonna come see you yeah i said i'm gonna come see you right now yeah you did mm. and i was, and was like, like no 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 yeah mm -hmm. i remember i didn't want to be seen by you at that point you know why why mm -hmm. Um, I felt like I looked different than when I left oh, okay. and I was just not, and also I was hanging out at my sister's. I wasn't like, glammed up. yeah, I wasn't, mm -hmm. I, I was not in town to see and be seen per se. I'm kind of like, no. Yeah. And you were like, doesn't matter. I don't care. What I don't you care look what like. you look mm -hmm. like. I'm coming. Yeah. And so I think, I don't think you came that day. I no, think no, you no. came the next day. Either next or yeah. Next, A couple was, days later, yeah. I had to get myself yeah. to mentally prepared. I don't know why I felt this way, but it had been over a year, mm -hmm. yeah. over a year and a half since we had seen each other. Yeah. Because it was, it was January of, yeah. yeah. And mm -hmm. it was, so it was at least a year and a half since we seen each other. It was over nine months or so since we had even talked. talked. Yeah. So it just felt, I was uncomfortable reasons. Mm -hmm 
unknown. But in any case, <laughs> I we planned to meet up and you come yeah. over to my sister's house. Mm -hmm. And this, for me... Ah, Sadate. Talk about it. Come on. Talk about it. I remember watching you drive into the apartment complex mm -hmm. and parking and walking. When you got out the car, I was like, God damn. <laughs> <laughs> this yeah. N word with the capital N is fine as hell with the capital H. All right. All right. Okay. I can keep cuss. going. No, I was no, no, no. like, yeah, you keep going. You my, go on, the but... gym that I left, mm -hmm. you know, handsome Jim, yeah. you know, my choir boy. He all right. You know, you was all right. You was all right. Something about the way you moved, something about the way you were walking and looking. Mm -hmm. And I said, the feelings that I have <laughs> are inappropriate feelings mm -hmm. to have. Right, right. For a friend. Yeah. Because yeah. I was like, he's a man. And I yeah. was not prepared to see a man. I actually was like, oh, that's going to be my little friend. Mm -hmm. That's my little homie Jim. And a man pulled up. And I remember looking at you like, I don't know what to do with myself. And you yeah. hugged me. Mm -hmm. And you did not want to you did not want to touch me. I couldn't. Yeah. I was like, I am <laughs> shocked. Mm -hmm. Been shocking all in a good way. And you hugged me and you were like, Robin, you mm -hmm. had no idea that I was like I, no, no. Mm -hmm. Um, this dude is so fine and he you smelled amazing. Oh, yeah? And you just were the joy and the mm -hmm. you it was like Wow. And then we started talking and it kind of just fell back, right, into right back into it. just yeah. more about our natural selves. But mm -hmm. I was like, oh, man, you grew up. Mm -hmm. and yeah, I had. Yeah. You had grown had up lost a lot. Weight. I had lost weight, um, grown little facial hair. So, yeah. Yeah. Had, that baby I face. I had matured. Yeah. <laughs> so in any case, we, we had a good visit. My mm -hmm. sister was there, you know. You every everything was copacetic, mm. right? Yeah, we was respectful. We, yes, yeah. yes, mm. and I think I I realized at that point, like, dang, he's really a man now, and you are you've moved on, I've moved on, mm -hmm. and I think I probably had a little bit of like, mm -hmm. dang, I missed out. Yeah, you know, because yeah. you in these streets, I was in I was in them streets, <laughs> and so <laughs> I then go back out of town. I I leave. And a few more months passed. We we did not we talk. talk. We had a good visit, mm -hmm. um, and I was happy about that because I think we needed to just clear the air, clear the air, and and figure out like okay, um, mm -hmm. we may not be friends like we were, but if I see you out in these streets, I know it'll be good we, to we, say it'll be cool. What's mm -hmm. up? Yeah. You know, yeah. and it. So that was a summer. September, September. rolls around. Mm -hmm. I'm back you know, uh, out of state. And I decided to give you a call mm -hmm. because it was your birthday month. Yeah. And I called the number, the last known number. Mm -hmm. And somebody strange, someone strange answered the phone. Mm -hmm. And as a matter of fact, you have a half brother with the same name. <laughs> Yeah, that's so. Uh, what is it? Well, I ain't gonna say it's we, ridiculous, we, but it's just yes. Where I have a brother, okay. I have brother the same name. Yes, S similar name, mm -hmm. right? So I remember when I called and I said, "Can I speak to Jim?" He mm -hmm. was like, "This is him." <laughs> like, no, this ain't him. And I was so I'm like, "Hey, it's Robin. You know what's going on? How you mm -hmm. doing? Just you know." And he was like, "Who?" Yeah. And I was, I think I said something like, "Quit playing with me, boy." <laughs> <laughs> like yeah, that's something funny. like that. Yeah. And then I was like, wait a minute, who is this? Yeah. And he was like, this is Jimmy. And mm -hmm. I said, this ain't my Jimmy. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> so we had a little bit of that mm -hmm. because I don't think I met your half brother. No, no. And I was just like, who is this playing with me? Mm -hmm. And he said, oh, you're looking for, I think he said, little Jim. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay. And he said, they moved. Mm -hmm. They don't live here anymore. Yeah. And I was like, mm -hmm. oh no. <gasps> mm -hmm. What? What's happening here? What? Yeah. And he said, here's their new number, his new number. And I was like, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
And I was like, hold on, do I got it right? Mm -hmm. uh, let me repeat it back to you. The mm -hmm. new number is, da -da -da, yeah. you're right? Mm -hmm. I was like, oh my gosh. Yeah. I hung up, called the new number, mm -hmm. and, and I, I left a voicemail. Yeah. It rang, mm -hmm. and it left a voicemail. And I don't know if your voicemail greeting had any real it was indicator. A robot. It was yeah, just a so I was machine. like, it was a robot deal. Yeah. I don't know mm -hmm. if I'm even getting to the right person, but mm -hmm. I'm leaving a voicemail. And I heard your voice. He was like, something to the effect, uh, hey, Jim, this is Robin. I hope this is the right number. Uh, just calling to say happy birthday. And and uh, I think you left your number. Yeah. And I was getting out of the shower. And the joy. <laughs> I was just so happy. It was just really good to hear your voice. It's like, oh, we don't have to, we don't have to lose touch now. You yeah. know what I mean? Because I think I even thought about it. Uh, while we were moving, and um, thought about what losing losing touch? touch, yeah, because I didn't at that time I didn't didn't have a way to contact you, so so it was just skin of our teeth. We was able to stay, in, you know, be able to find have a way to stay in touch. So, yeah, yeah. So I think mm -hmm. that is one of the things about us is that we always got really close. Yeah. to meeting or or connecting. And it was just, we were just shy. Yeah. And I, I remember after calling your brother saying you moved mm -hmm. and it was like something fell to the pit of my stomach yeah. that, oh my God, I, if I didn't call when I called, I, you would have, I would have missed you forever. That's what it felt like. Like, yeah. oh, that, wow. Mm -hmm. And I knew that I, whatever is going on, I don't want to miss that again right. so at some point we do talk mm -hmm. and you let me know you know your parents got married and mm -hmm. moved and you know yeah. all the things that was going on with you guys yeah. mm -hmm. and whatnot and it just felt like okay this is this really is a, a like a fresh start we so much has happened in my life yeah. so much has happened in your life let's start catching up mm -hmm. and so we did we did yeah, yeah, and it was, I don't, really don't remember. Yeah, it was just catching up when we talked. Yeah, you know, and it still felt like felt like old times when we did. Yeah, yeah. We just it, it's just weird, man. I'm not weird, not weird in a bad way. Just weird in a good way, in the sense that at all the zigzags, you know, at the end of the day, we always we was always able to fall back. To where we were before, that's you know true. what I mean. So, you know, some people call it fate, destiny, whatever. I don't know what you want to call it, but it was definitely something. I think so too. Yeah. When we um, started to get to know each other, we mm -hmm. would share stories, mm -hmm. and I didn't realize even as kids in elementary school how close we yeah. were in, to each other. Like mm -hmm. I remember, I had a best friend, and. Um, she attended your church yeah. and I remember I used to go to church with her mm -hmm. on occasions. I remember being in vacation Bible school with her and we would have these conversations yeah. and I was like, I remember all these other kids in the class and you were like, I was in the yeah. class and I'm like, you were in our vacation yes. Bible school mm -hmm. and you were like, yes, I know them and mm -hmm. them, and these are, you know, so it's like, oh, and then your, I think I, we mentioned this before, but I was in a social club and your brother's girlfriend mm -hmm. was in that club. Yeah. And, you know, never met you. Yeah. Going to the choir, you're there. Didn't meet you Didn't then. Meet, yeah. You know, all these things where it's like we were always near each other mm -hmm. and didn't, didn't meet, didn't meet yeah. and connect until we needed to meet and connect. And then us trying and trying to be more than friends and it didn't work out. And, Friendship ending, then friendship changing, mm -hmm. and all these gaps and things. It's it's one of those things that it feels like a movie yeah. to me. Like yeah. it, it could really be the plot of yeah. a movie. Mm -hmm. All the zigs and zags and the um, windy roads yeah. in our love story. I think it makes it unique and also delightful. Yeah. And I think for some reason when you're watching, not you, but when we are watching romance movies, sometimes we want it to be that straight shot, one and done. Mm -hmm. I found my person, we we locked eyes across the room and you know, fate and destiny 
you know, drew our, our hearts together and we've been together ever since. I feel like if people have those stories, great. Right. That's pretty, pretty awesome too. But if your story is a little bit more like our story, where it, you know, has a little bit of drama and excitement and mystery and mm-hmm. intrigue and suspense. Yeah. And I mean, some movies, a lot of movies are like that, though. And those right? are my favorite movies. Right. Because it's always the, the, the two people meet, they get together, something happens, they break up. You know what I mean? Some misunderstanding or whatever. And they go their separate ways. Then a lot of times they find a way. And, you know, like, mm-hmm. I know you see those goofy rom coms where the the guy goes to the wedding or like different world listen a different baby world. please baby please yes. yeah yeah i used mm-hmm. to think this like um the whitley mm-hmm. Dwayne thing yeah. i i connected with that yeah. as we got older i was like i get it now as mm-hmm. a kid when i was watching it i didn't fully understand of course you right. know but as an adult looking back at that and you see that tension when he's Dwayne is with Ke- kinu Kino, yeah. Okay. Uh-huh. Liz almost did a Whitley and called her something mm-hmm. else. Kika Nunu or whatever. Kika Nunu yeah. or what? <laughs> but mm-hmm. you see that tension yeah. when she, he moved on. Mm-hmm. And then when she was with Julian. And then she's and then, with uh, the Byron. Byron mm-hmm. and, and then finally it's like, he was like, please, yeah, man, please. Baby, please. Everybody mm-hmm. loves their story because mm-hmm. it's, it, for us, it's real life. Yeah. And aside that uh, baby, when he said "baby, please," that was an ad lib. It was. It was that wasn't in the script. He, I think he said he forgot his line or something. So, oh, it yeah, felt so, so real. Did, oh my did. gosh! Mm-hmm. Another movie that has those zigzags that people love, Love Jones. Oh look! Listen. Yes. That is real love mm-hmm. to me when. It has that little element of drama, not disrespect. Right. I'm not right. saying that, mm-hmm. but there has to be some um, moments of 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 just I don't know. It's some moments. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know where that. you're going, but yeah, it's, it's, it's where it's, you don't know if they're yeah. going to make it, and then they figure out they should make it, and, and then they figure they out do. a way to make it, and they figure out a way to mm-hmm. make it. So I want to talk about that in our next episode. How did we decide to make it? Because I had to close a chapter in my life mm-hmm. to start a new chapter with you, and that wasn't as seamless. <laughs> That wasn't that seamless, you know? Yeah, because, yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. Nobody was, broke I up was, anybody's happy home. Right, no, Let's no. Let's put that out yes. there. Say it again. Say it again. We didn't. No nobody, one. No one broke up a happy home. Right, right. So don't, don't want y'all going around telling telling people. Jim then went in there and. Or that did Robin then went around yeah, here. No, no. It, it wasn't, wasn't like that. It was that. all. It was. It wasn't like that. It was like there mm-hmm. is a rascal in the story, mm-hmm. and the rascal will be exposed next. <laughs> Good next, next time. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. yeah, I had. I did move on. You did move yes. on. Yes. Okay, go on. We'll talk about it yeah. in our next episode. We are going to wrap up how our love story began, but please stay tuned. If you enjoyed watching, let us know in the comments. If you are um, enjoying. What we're doing here let us know that too yeah and be sure to what like comment subscribe, subscribe. rate yeah go ahead and comment share. y'all can in the comments you can talk about your love story if you want oh yeah little fun facts or whatever you want to you know yeah whatever it is we would, we would love to engage with y'all so we sure would okay all right until next time have a good one have a good one <laughs> <laughs>